Trash cans are normally very boring. Basically a basket or a bucket where the only fun thing is to try and throw a piece of paper towards it to see if you can hit. Whenever you do hit, there is rarely someone around to see it anyways. And because of that, there is a lot of potential of making a trash can better. This proved to be one of those projects I thought would be quick and easy to make, but it actually turned out to be quite the opposite. Oh no, I was pouring it on the table. Oh man. I started this project to be able to tackle a couple of problems I have. One, I need a trash can. And what I had to make this trash can of was either wood or trash. I chose the trash. B but hang on, there's an idea behind this. The second issue is that I'm working on my own in my workshop almost every day. Or I'm editing videos on my own. Or having breakfast on my own. And sometimes I read the comments. Sometimes they hurt. Because of that I wanted to make something that could encourage me in my work. I need someone to occasionally tell me that what I'm doing is good. Someone biased. Hey man, uh, just wanted to say fantastic work. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Now, the first Bye. problem is easy. You could just buy any bucket and you have a trash can. But a regular trash can is boring. I want to make a trash can that can recycle the trash I already have, but still looks cool. The second problem might be a bit harder, but I think I have an idea for that as well. So let's address the first issue. Let's make a trash can out of this trash. I have this bucket, which is basically a normal sized trash can, so I thought, what if I put a smaller bucket inside of that bucket and that creates this gap around the edges that I could put some trash in, in between and then fill it with clear epoxy and that would create a trash can that looks like it's filled all the time, right? At least that's the idea. So I have a bunch of epoxy lined up. I think I'm gonna pour this in small portions because the epoxy is gonna be trapped between the two pieces of plastic and this can only be cast 30 millimeters at a time. But doing it in portions would also let me fill up with trash whilst I'm doing it. I started by putting on some mold release on all the plastic surfaces that would be covered in epoxy. Then I realized that I wanted to line up the two buckets so that they are equal. So I started by cutting a small piece of walnut to size and then I placed that at the bottom of the big bucket. That will ensure that the two buckets end up equally high. I did actually engrave a message on the walnut before I placed it at the bottom. But I'll show that later. It will make sense, I think. What do you think it says? To make sure the smaller bucket wouldn't float, I taped it with some duct tape at the center and then I added some weights to the top after pouring the first batch of epoxy as well. I think that'll be good. I think the bucket's not going anywhere. I placed some of the trash I had collected around the bottom of the bucket. Now there might be an issue with air in all of the trash so I knew I couldn't stir the epoxy too much. A vacuum chamber would probably be the best, but I don't have that. Nor do I intend to buy one for a stupid project like this. Because it is a bit stupid. I'm not saying that all epoxy projects are stupid, just kind of ugly. Oh, come on, I'm from Sweden. We don't like plastic looking things. This is so exciting. Maybe I can just hold it whilst I pour it, I don't know. Here we go. All or nothing. Here we go. Oh, it's going down in the bucket. Now it's just a matter to see if all the air bubbles will get out and it's gonna stay as clear as it is right now. I think it's pretty clear right now. I saw the air bubbles, I read online, heat gun, blowtorch, all those things were rendered useless by the fact that I couldn't reach down to the epoxy. And when that was left to dry I could start working on the second problem I had. Encouragement. I once made this really big 3D printed Super Mario and whenever someone passed him there was a sensor that could recognize movement and he had a speaker that would talk. I figured that I could probably make just that, but with the trash can talking instead of Super Mario. So that whenever someone throws something in it, it would say something encouraging or just make a sound. Since I'd already made a similar thing in the past, I knew I needed some equipment. An Arduino Nano as the computer, 
a 3 watt speaker that I could steal from my kid's USB speaker, a sensor that is a basic sensor that detects movement, and I connected everything on a breadboard to try it out. All right, I have all the components. Let's see if it works. I'm gonna connect it to this power bank. Now let's try to set off the sensor. I'm done. Yes, it works. <laughs> you can actually adjust the sensitivity of the PIR sensor on the device, but you could also do that in software or the 3D printed part that I'm building around it. I could make that smaller so that it doesn't have the same range of view because I don't want it too sensitive because that would get annoying in the workshop. You're such a good maker. <laughs> right now I need to figure out how to put this in the trash can and I'm thinking of building some kind of an encasing that could hang around the edge of the trash can. That way I can take it off when I don't need it or want it there. Back to the epoxy. I waited for the bottom part to cure for about 24 hours and after that I was ready to add a second layer and some more trash. At this point I was really nervous that the layer lines would be too visible. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They make PCBs and PCB assemblies, but they also do 3D printing and CNC machining. If you, for instance, have something you want 3D printed or CNC milled, you can head on over to PCBWay.com and upload your design and have them make it for you. They will quote and ship it directly to you. So thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. I could already see that there would be a visible seam between the two layers. It wasn't too bad though, and I realized I should have poured the second layer sooner, when the first layer was still a bit more floaty. After that, I decided to start working on the housing for my encouragement device. I was drawing the housing in CAD whilst measuring the devices and making sure everything would fit. I realized I could call the device Trash Talk. Very funny. So I asked ChatGPT for a logo. I took that logo and added it to the top of the housing. Then it was ready for 3D printing. I also added some tabs to the lid so that I could open up the case in case I ever wanted to replace any parts. Why I would need that, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I just wanted to flex my CAD muscles and show you I can make a snap lid. I recorded 12 audio files that I could save as MP3 on an SD card that I could attach to a small device called DF Player Mini. That connects to the speaker and the Arduino. You're such a good maker. Stop stalling and get to work. You're the man. Look at you go. Give me more. Give me something else to talk about. Delicious. Did you throw that at me? Did you throw that at me? Did you throw? <laughs> After that, it was all about attaching all the components and attaching them to the case. And there it was, a very simple case for the encouragement device. It uses the 12 different audio files and randomly plays one of the tracks upon sensing movement. All it takes are some audio files on the SD card so I could easily swap them out for something else if I want to make it a bit more themed, say doing some Christmas ones. Oh, and that's why I added the snap lid of course, to be able to get the SD card out. I kept pouring layers after layers, but I realized it was really hard to get the layer lines not to show. I mean, I was trying to pour it when the epoxy hadn't already set, but sometimes I had to wait overnight and once I woke up it was too hardened. But it doesn't really make any difference. Okay, I think I'm approaching the last pour. Uh, it's currently 5.30 in the morning, so I did this one this morning, so probably tonight or tomorrow morning I can do the last pour in one step. But I do think it's looking quite cool already, doesn't it? I just hope I can get it out because that's the most important part. <laughs> I don't want to do this again. <laughs> okay, I'm ready for the last layer. This is so exciting. Ah, I'm just gonna pour it. I'm just gonna mix it all up and pour it in. The thing is, I don't have, I've got 10 minutes <laughs> because I've got other obligations. I'm recording a podcast in 10 minutes, so this just needs to be done within 10 minutes. Oh no, I poured it on the table. 
just pour too much. I just poured all over this. Oh man. All right, that's the last layer done. Now all I can do is wait for it to dry, and then I can hopefully get it out. Maybe I can pry it up with like a crowbar or something. It's the thing, it starts hopeful and then suddenly you realize this is not gonna work. Got it all out. Look at this. <laughs> well, uh, time to finish. After I got it out, I started sanding, wet sanding and polishing the best I could to make it look as polished and transparent as possible. I also had to do a bit of shaping on the top edge. Once that was done, I could also finish the last part of the speaker that is supposed to hang off the edge of the trash can. I did 3D print those last parts and then, then I had this finished trash can that looks like it's already full, kind of, that I can throw stuff in to get encouraged in the workshop. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Give me something else to talk about. <laughs> did you throw that at me? Yeah, I did. Once more, I could do this all day. I think I need emptying. Yeah, because it's on the top. <laughs> Try this then. I'm done. Delicious. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.